Welcome everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon or morning or evening for those of you patching in from other time zones. My name is Julie and my colleague Katie and I will be running today's webinar, CK12 for Science Teachers. We have lots to cover today, but before we start, I'd like to go over a few logistics about the Zoom webinar platform. You should see two different options on your Zoom screen. One for questions and answers, Q&A, and one for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please feel free to post it in the Q&A window. We'll pause for a Q&A session and after each major topic to address any questions that have been submitted. The chat window is a place for community conversation. We'd love for all of you to introduce yourselves. If you're an educator, feel free to share your state or country district, or what science class you may be teaching. Just make sure that when in the chat window, you're sending general posts to everyone and not just to CK12 or the panelists. Also, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you are having any trouble with your video or your sound, please let us know by posting a message in Q&A or the chat window. Now that we've gone through the logistics for the webinar, it would be terrific if we found out a little bit more about you. A poll will be shown here in a few seconds that will prompt you to respond to two short questions. The first question is just to get an idea of how long you've been using CK12. The second is asking how familiar you are with CK12's resources and tools. Knowing both of these will help us tailor the webinar and provide the most relevant content for you. So here are the questions. How long have you been using CK12? I'm brand new to the website. Less than one year, one year, two years, three years, or four plus years. What parts of our site do you use most frequently? Choose all that apply. Flexbooks, simulations, clicks, videos, adaptive practice, assignments, LMS integration, or none of the above. Note that for the second question, you're allowed to select all the answers that apply for this poll. I'll pause for a moment to let you finish answering the poll. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Our team will review these questions to help us direct our conversation. Great. Thank you, Julie. So beyond finding out about you, we thought this might be a good time to pause and let you think about what you're hoping to get out of this webinar. So take a minute to determine the following. The first is one thing you hope to get out. You're welcome to post this in the chat window if you feel comfortable, and we'll see if we can address these areas as we go. And then the second thing is a question you might have about CK12 or what's offered. So I'm betting you already have plenty of questions and that's why you're here today. You're welcome to start posting them in the Q&A window or you can save them until the appropriate section of the webinar and we'll see if we can cover them as we go. We're a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to improving student learning by increasing access to educational materials through the Flexbook platform and concept-based modalities. CK12 offers free, high-quality, standards-aligned, open content through an integrated set of tools for learning, which includes digital textbooks, concept-based learning resources, simulations, interactive practice, and more. And we give it all away for free. Our core content and curriculum is for middle school and high school math and science, with some K-5 math practice and videos, and some K-5 science flexbooks. However, with the addition of donated resources and user-created content, you'll be able to find flexbooks for other subjects and levels, especially related to social studies and English. One final note before I turn the presentation over to Katie. People often wonder how large our foundation is. 
Well, CK-12 is run by a small but passionate team of about 35 people in Palo Alto, California. We have a few colleagues working outside of California, including in our India office. We're all here because we love what we do and we love our team. We're so excited to give people all over the world access to free, high quality content and resources. With that, let's start exploring what CK-12 has to offer you. Okay, Katie, take it away. Thank you, Julie, for that introduction to CK-12, and thank you to everyone who joined us today. So specifically during this webinar, I'll be covering the following topics. The first is concept-based learning and finding resources. Um, the second is flexbooks and customizing content, and the third is adaptive practice. So we're going to just have Julie click play again. She popped out of that for a second um, so that you guys can see the full keynote screen and then you'll be good to go. Um, so just to explain concept-based learning resources, flexbooks, and adaptive practice, concept-based learning is talking about um, our, kind of the different modalities that we have to support our resources. Flexbooks is tailoring CK12 and other users' content to meet your needs in the customizing piece. And then in adaptive practice, we're gonna be talking about creating assignments, adaptive practice versus quizzes, student progress, and learning management systems. So when you go to ck12.org, you'll see this is the student version, so it includes the study guides on the homepage, but you'll find an educational platform providing standards-aligned STEM resources that can be accessed anytime, anywhere, and on any device for free. As you can see, there's a number of different ways to learn any concept on CK12. So we enrich every concept with modalities to help meet students' needs in the best way possible. And this is what we call concept-based learning. So these modalities start with reads. We also have simulations, interactive clicks, videos, practice, and even real-world applications. I think now is a good time to show a quick one and a half minute clip of teacher Chris Pickens using CK-12's flexbooks, clicks, and simulations to differentiate learning in his sixth grade science classroom at Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I guess started with CK-12 as our school district went through an adoption. This is our CK-12 rocket simulation that we're gonna be working on today. The level of engagement with the Chromebooks and the CK-12 is just amazing. It's, it's changed my career. I think the students can sense that. Uh, I, I'm excited to come into school every day because I'm learning something new every day. I didn't realize that something this simple as a Chromebook um, and some online textbooks could change the way that I teach that much, but it's been pretty much a door that has opened that I can't close anymore. But I can tell you, this is a certainly a lot more exciting way to teach. The level of engagement with the kids is phenomenal. I can have a variety of students doing a variety of different things. I can have advanced students working on things. I can have students on IEPs working on things, all in the same class, where in years past when somebody would ask me to do some of those things. I was like, what, I can't do all that. I can't record all that. Everybody's gonna do the same thing. With CK-12, I can have a variety of assignments going at the same time, in the same class. I'm not stressed. The students aren't stressed because it's, they're kind of getting some instruction at their level. And so I just think everybody's much happier to come into class. Students should be leaving school saying, oh, that was fun. Great, thank you, Julie, um, for sharing that video. So the question then becomes how to access all of the resources that Chris was using, as well as the other ones that CK12 offers. So when I work with educators a lot, I find that the best way to go about answering that question is based on the goal they have when they access CK12. So are they looking for a particular resource related to a topic? So for example, resources related to nucleic acids or Newton's law, life on earth or chemistry and we'll go through that via both our search and our science branch browse options the second option might be to find a particular type of resource so say you're in a class and you're looking to you know replace your whole curriculum with a new flexbook or you're looking to supplement it with simulations or you need standards aligned resources 
And we can talk about that through our different browser options as well as our Flexbooks tab. So I think going through these at this point in time, I'm actually just gonna switch over to our live site. So let me share my screen and we'll just go to CK12 and start exploring these resources. Um, so I know there's a lot of questions kind of about, about differentiating instruction, about how to get teachers to use this that are coming through the chat window in terms of your goals. So hopefully I will address those as I go. And if there's anything specific that I don't cover kind of throughout the course of this, definitely bring it back up again in Q&A because we'll have time for that both throughout this webinar as well as at the end, we'll stay on and answer any questions you guys might have. Um, so starting with that first idea, let's say you're teaching a topic and you're looking for resources to go with that particular topic. So if I'm teaching a unit on heat or temperature, I can simply search. This search box is on across the site, so you can search for that and pull up our search results. And you'll see a few options. You could filter by grade level, you could filter by type down here if you were looking for types. And then you'll see we have both concepts as well as a read here, and then if I scroll down, some other concepts that relate to it. But let's pick that first concept on heat, temperature, and thermal energy transfer. And this is what we call our concept page. And you can see kind of at the top some featured content. You'll see the different types of modalities that we talked about when we just mentioned concept-based learning. Um, and this is a great way to differentiate for students that are struggling if they're having trouble with the textbook, which is this read. Um, maybe have them watch a video, have them do some practice. And we'll go into both of those kind of some more as we go through. But two things that might be new to you are what we call our interactive simulations and our clicks. And so let's take a few minutes to kind of go through those core modalities so you have an idea of what they look like. So the first one is our simulations. So right now we have simulations for our physics content and we have some beta simulations for our chemistry content. So for each simulation that you access, you'll start with a question. And the physics ones include kind of a little walkthrough description that goes with that question. But the, regardless, you can just skip forward into the actual interactive component by clicking forward. And this brings you to what we call our sandbox. So in the sandbox in a simulation, and this is a fairly straightforward sim, sometimes you'll see multiple different sliders all over the place with a whole system of pieces working together. But I can change the temperature. And then I can say, let's turn the oven on and see what's happening to the temperature and to the energy within both the air as well as the pan inside this oven. So that's kind of the, the working environment or what we call the sandbox. You'll see maybe a tutorial video, um, the concepts that it is related to, and this is assigned a class feature, which we'll talk about in part three of today's webinar. If I continue through the simulation, you'll see what we call slider-based questions. And these are currently available for physics, and then they'll be built out for the other topics as we continue to build out our simulations. Anything on our site where we want to differentiate between stuff that we've created and stuff that the community might have created, you'll see CK12 content as well as maybe community contributed content in a tab here or in search or elsewhere. But if I click on any of these questions, I can then try something, I can figure out what's happening, I can look at the question again, and then I can submit that question and I got it right in this case or I could try it again. And the last piece of our simulations is other situations where that topic is relevant or that concept is relevant. And it just gives you a little, another way that you could talk about it with your students or apply it. Um, and so those are kind of our more expansive, different component simulations. And as I said, we'll see them for both physics as well as chemistry. Now, if I go back to this page, and just to let you know, the CK12 logo will always take you back to the home page, but right now I want to stick on our concept page and talk about our PLIX. So PLIX stands for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore. And our PLIX are set up a little bit differently. They're often a little bit more simple instead of a full system of things that you're working with. They might or might not have variables, but they're really a chance for students to explore a concept. So you'll see a description off here to the left. And then it says, move the red points to watch the water molecules move within both the vapor and ice samples. So you can see kind of how they're moving in solid ice and how they're moving in water vapor and how that's different in that situation. And then each of our clicks is supported with questions. So we can say, click on this. And one thing to note, our clicks are really exploratory options. They're not an assessment component. So we really want students to have access to the answers so they could see the correct answer there. 
And you'll see over the course of questions, different types of questions. I could pull something down here, submit it, and continue on. So that was kind of a categorizing or matching. The slow ball starts to move faster here, the fastball moves slower, and I can continue to advance that way. And what you'll see over the course of them is that we try to address kind of higher levels of thinking as we go. So maybe a basic question as you start, and then more application pieces. And then at the end, you'll see an open discussion question that allows for a class discussion, or in this case, it links to our Plix Cafe. And that's a great place for students to go and talk to each other and explore as they're working through. Um, so that's kind of the difference between our physics simulations and our Plix. And I'll show you how to browse that in a few minutes. But within any particular concept, you can always see that piece. Um, so I'm going to take a minute and talk about a couple different types of strategies that you could work with within your class. So one strategy is to have students each review a different modality and then come up with their own notes on what they think is in that concept and work together to compile a set of class notes um, on the concept as a whole. So that might be a teaching strategy. And you know, in science, you have all these different options for reads, videos, practice, clicks, those interactive simulations. You'll see down here a real world application, and that might be a case study or a set of data points or something that, you know, just like kind of the end of the simulations, really how that concept is applied in another situation. Um, a couple of other options for strategies is using a Plix or a simulation as a warm up. Um, so you could do that as an introduction to your class or maybe as part of an exit slip as you work your way through. Um, and that way students are taking a few minutes to explore that concept on their own. And then that last open discussion question that we talked about with Plix, you could have students either write on the cafe itself, which you can access from up here, and you'll see all of our cafes there, um, or just in a journal within the class or with their neighbor as they're working through. Um, so that's one option for finding content based on a particular topic by using that search option at the top. The other option is to browse. And so if I go back to the homepage for CK12, let's pick a different branch of science so that we kind of cover a number of areas. And let's go to chemistry. So I can, you can see here what we call our concept page. And you can see a number of different concepts related. And we really try to take those larger lessons that have multiple skills built in and break them into these smaller concepts and then support those with all of those modalities to work with students and really help you differentiate between resources. So if I scroll down, let's say, to different quantitative relationships, um, maybe I can pick the conversion between moles and atoms. And once again, this will take me to my concept page. We're in a different branch, so right now there's not a simulation yet for chemistry because we just have a few of those out. But I still have text and Plix Interactive, some practice, a real world application as you go through. Um, and then you'll see kind of all of those different resources that fit with any particular concept. One other thing to note, either on the branch page or here on a concept page, is what we call our concept map. And this is a great planning resource. So if I click on that concept map, you know, this topic has to do with scientific notation. It has a component of it. So I could click on here and kind of see conversion between moles and atoms and how it relates. Or I could search for a new topic, scientific notation. And in this case, you'll see the different resources Let's try that one more time. You'll see the different resources that are related to it both in math and in science. And that might be a great way to work with a colleague and build kind of a unit that covers, excuse me, and build a unit that covers both math and science, or even work across science branches with other teachers by building out connections. And each one of these will go back to that concept page with those resources, or you can expand it further and see how that relates to other concepts as you go. So we're gonna just go back to that page we were on. So that your options to find content for a specific topic would be that search option or going through the browse page for that particular branch. And then here you might be able to have a couple of different units or lessons that work together if you're trying to build. So I could say, let's teach all of these particular things from conversion, maybe this other conversion option as a unit together. And so a teaching strategy to go with that might be to have students each pick a concept and make their own video that goes with that to teach it, and then put those together as kind of your review for that unit as you go. Um, one last way to kind of find particular types of resources, 
So that was finding based on the topic. But if I go, you can find kind of all the resources within any, within any concept. Or I could go back to that homepage and I could browse some of those resources. So if I scroll down, you'll see here are simulations. So I could click on that and browse through all of our simulations. You're welcome to filter based on different concepts or standards. You can see you know, some of our chemistry simulations that are in beta right now, you can explore. Um, so you could browse by that particular type. Similarly, you could browse our Plix Interactive. Um, and you'll see at the top of this particular piece that it has changed branches because I've selected my branches. Um, but I can go through and explore you know, physics ones or life science ones or any topic that you're working with. Um, similarly, you could do the same thing for our adaptive practice as well as for um, flexbooks that schools have published through these browse options. And we'll get there as we go through. Um, so I think this is probably a good place to stop for a few minutes and answer some questions as we're going to go. Um, so I know we had some questions about answer keys and I'm gonna hold off on that because that has to do with the flexbooks themselves and we'll be covering that in part two. So just pause on that question for a minute, but let's see what other questions we have in here. Um, so we have some questions on what's the best way to get my science teachers using this resource? So I would say just show them what is there. Um, I think the most common response I get from teachers when I work with them is, oh my gosh, I wish I'd known this existed. Um, and I know Julie mentioned this before, but everything on our site is 100% free. Um, so there's no premium level, there's no you know, access based on whatever. We're funded by a family foundation and it's 100% free. So if they're teaching a physics or chem class, maybe show them a simulation. If they're teaching something else, the plics. Or we're gonna get into that adaptive practice component. Um, as we continue to go, we'll be posting more and more of these webinars on our site, so you could have them check out one of those. Um, and really just have them explore or share something, say, I'm using this great resource, here's a place to go. Um, and we can always partner with you guys and say, you know, if you're trying to figure out what it's like to do this in another school, we have schools that have been super helpful for us that have already done customization and they're great resources as well. So we have a question about compatibility with Google Classroom. Um, and I'll show you that quickly here, but we will also get to see it later on. So if you click on, let's say the physics branch or any of these other places, this little green share plane has the option to share via email, share on Google Classroom, or share via social media. So all of our resources are easily shared within Google Classroom. Um, and we'll note some of those specifics a little bit more as we work through. Um, is it possible to find concepts by using the standards from NGSS? Yes, that's definitely true. And I'll show you, I guess I can show you the standards browser right now so you get to see part of it. Um, so if you're looking for concepts based on standards, from the teacher homepage, we have this standards browser. And you could click on Next Generation Science Standards. And then for any given concept, let's say I was teaching middle school earth and space sciences. I could click on that area, and then you'll see the standard here, and you'll see all of the CK12 concepts that relate to that particular standard. So if I clicked on any one of these, it would take me to that page, and you'd see the resources that are related to that particular standard. So that's kind of finding resources for a particular topic or for a particular standard as you work your way through. And I'll show you the flexbooks based on that um, in the next section of this webinar. So that's done. We have a couple more questions that we'll go through. So what's the best way to organize an entire semester worth of material? I think the answer to that is a flexbook. And I'll show you kind of what that looks like in a moment. Um, and then we have a couple of other questions. So do students need to create an account? Um, they should have a CK12 account if they want full access to all of our resources. So if that is um, that they, you want to use the interactives, they would need to have an account. If you want to use any of our um, practice and kind of have it track their scores, they would need an account. Um, so I highly recommend that you do that. If you have younger students and you're worried about that, we have some options for uploading um, and kind of creating accounts that way. Just talk to us and email support and we can work with you on that piece. Um, if you're using a um, learning management system, we'll get to that piece. And a lot of the times you can have them log in through that. So you wouldn't necessarily have to create a separate account. It would auto be created in that piece. Um, 
And do you use Google single sign-on? Yes. That is actually a really good question and it's something I didn't cover today, but let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go up to the top where I'm logged in and I'm gonna sign out. Um, and if I sign back in, you'll see it pop up. I can sign in with Google, with Facebook, I can sign in with Twitter or Microsoft, or I could create a separate account. But if you're already using Google, I'm logged into my Google account, it's gonna auto sign me in and I am good to go. Um, so that's probably the easiest option. We also do single sign on with Clever as well um, and Classlink. So if you're looking at that option. And then we have one last question about how much time it would take to develop a unit or a chapter. Um, so let me show you what our Flexbooks look like and you can actually use our stuff as is without developing your own or you can customize that and create your own. So you'll see kind of depending on how much time you have and how much you want to customize for your class, you, that's totally up to you. Um, so I think with that, I'm gonna let Julie share her screen and we're gonna pull up our presentation again and kind of move into that Flexbooks and customizing content component of today's presentation. Thanks, Julie. So now that you've seen our concept pages and the difference between our interactives, let's take some time to talk about our science flexbooks and the ways you might want to customize content to tailor it to your class. So these are the three pieces that we'll go through. The first is our license, and I know we had a question about that. Um, we're licensed under Creative Commons CC BY NC licensing, which we'll go into. The next is both CK12 and user-created flexbooks, um, particularly for STEM and as well as other branches. And then the third part is customizing these books. Katie, I want to share a brief soundbite from Tullahoma City School Superintendent Dan Lawson. It's about his district's use of flexbooks. I really love what he has to say about buying relevance with his students through customization. So let me play a quick video for you from our interview. Yeah, as, as we think about customizable content, certainly the important is not so it'll simply look like our community, but it's, it's a tool that we use to buy relevance with our kids. As we think about a textbook that is created for Texas or Ohio or California or New York, it doesn't have a place, it doesn't have a person, it doesn't have a thing that connects with our community. In using the CK12 template and using the CK12 content, we have the ability to upgrade, update, and customize every math problem, every science experiment with people, places, and things that our students know and understand. We buy relevance that can't be purchased in textbooks. Great, thank you, Julie, so much for sharing that. And it's so true about that relevance component. Um, and hopefully this video encourages you to customize your content, but know that you can really start with what we have and kind of slowly customize it over the course of time as you're working through. Um, so as we progress from here, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about our license. So before we begin exploring our Flexbooks, please note, um, if we kind of switch to the next slide, we can go from here and see our customization. There we go. Um, I think it just froze for a second. So um, you have the ability to adapt and share content on our site because we're licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. Um, the basic gist of this is that you can't sell any of our content and you need to give appropriate credit but in order to find out the specifics, I would highly recommend looking at Creative Commons and what that license means, as well as kind of the terms and use on our site. But that allows you to make that adaptation and customization. Um, to show you what the Flexbooks actually look like, I'm gonna go back to our live site and we can explore that on CK12. Um, so you could search for Flexbooks through there. Let's see, I was teaching a biology class. I could search up there or I could go to CK12's homepage, and I could go down to that subject or branch that I'm working with. And because I demo across math and science, you'll see all of these kind of mixed together. If you haven't picked your subjects, you can just show all of them below that. 
And so if I click on biology, you'll see the concepts that we've broken biology down into, and then you'll see this option for a Flexbook textbook tab. And that will take you to the books that we have related to biology. So here you'll see a couple of different pieces. You'll see the CK12 biology book, an advanced version, so that's a great way to differentiate across classes or across students that might want more of a challenge. And then you'll see the biology concepts book as well. And if you looked at those, we really took kind of those longer lessons that might have multiple concepts and broke them into each concept page. Um, so that would be the difference between that. And if you compare the table of contents, you'll often see the concept books, this, there's more sections because each section is broken down a little bit more as you go through. Um, if I click on the teacher edition for the biology book, we had a question about answer keys. And in the resources tab, you'll see the teacher's edition with answers for that book. So that's a great place to check for your answers um, on that piece. Another couple notes about our Flexbooks. You can, for some of our books, we've been working to translate our concept collections into Spanish. So you might see a Spanish version there. Or if I went back to all languages, you could scroll down for the Spanish version. If you're looking at a topic, for example, in math that has both middle school and high school within the larger branch, you might also be able to filter accordingly for that piece. Um, so one teaching strategy, let's say we go into this book, I'll go into the concepts book for a second. And if I click on the beginning of this, you'll see we have a full book here. You don't have to customize anything that you're working with. You are definitely more than welcome to do so. But if I went into this piece, I could start doing um, work with this. You'll see on the left notes and highlights and vocabulary in here. So this has a vocab option, or I could have students highlight keywords. And once they just highlight it there, they can pick a color. They could add a note if they wanted to add a note. And I know a lot of teachers that use that as a teaching strategy. Um, so they could use the highlighting tool as they go through. And then color code based on keywords, ideas, on all of those different pieces. Um, so that's a great resource as you're working through. So another option for finding resources, if I go back to the homepage, either kind of using this trail back to the homepage or using the CK12 icon, I can find user-created books through the school's icon. I could do it through search as well. So if I searched for, let's say, biology, I could then click on the community contributed tab here and find different reads or different resources related to that. But from the home page, the reason why I really like the schools page is that it's based on the state that you're in. So if I click on schools, and I'm in California, so that defaulted to there, but I'm gonna actually go down to Florida here. So if I pick Florida and I scroll down, you can see all the different schools that have created books and republished their book to our site and then shared it with us by tagging it to this page. And if I go down to Polk County, they've done some great work. And what they did was they took some of our middle school science content and they actually adapted it to third, fourth, and fifth grade science. And so if you're teaching fourth grade science and you don't want to start from scratch, you can always open that Flexbook that um, Dr. Milt Healing created and then use that and customize it from that point. So you're welcome to do that either from our content or from content that other users have created and republished. Um, so a strategy for you on that piece is to just browse the schools page, see what other resources are out there, and then maybe even say, oh my gosh, that county might be right nearby. I can go talk to the teachers in there that have done this work already and then use them as a resource as you're working through. Um, and just a note, as I talk about different teaching strategies or planning strategies throughout this webinar, one of my colleagues is typing those into the chat window, so you're welcome to kind of look through those as I talk um, as we go through. And then the last part of this, kind of finding resources, is we were asked about next generation science standards. So if you wanted to find books aligned to that, you could pick a state or a standard. So I'm going to view more standards, look for NGSS aligned, or let's say chemistry at a 10th grade level. And then it will pull up the book that might be best for you in that piece, or it might have books that have other resources related to that area and topic that are aligned accordingly. So that's finding our Flexbooks. And that's the, I'm going to use that resource. I don't have to do any work to edit it or customize it, and I'm good to go. And you are more than welcome to do that, as we've said. Um, however, if you'd like to edit it, let's pick another branch. So let's say physical science. And I'm going to go to that Flexbook. And I want to customize this for my particular class. And it's super simple to customize. You just look at this little thing on the left side that says customize. 
And the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to save the name as you're going through. So I'm just going to put for science teacher demo. Um, and then the most basic type of editing that you can do is to rearrange or edit or delete content. So let's say I'm teaching a unit, but I'm not going to cover energy this year. I could just delete that entire chapter by clicking this X and remove it. Now, if next year I want back and I was going to teach the unit on energy, I could go back to the original Flexbook and add that back into this one um, by just pulling that content from elsewhere on our site. If I wanted to rearrange pieces, either as a chapter as a whole, I could drag them and move them using our drag arrow option. And then if I wanted to rearrange within chapters, I just toggle down that chapter. And then the same deal for the next chapter. And I can drag from this chapter all the way up into this chapter and kind of mix and match and rearrange. Now, that might not make the most sense in terms of the one I randomly picked, but definitely as you're building different pieces, you're welcome to do that. If you wanna create smaller units, you can create new chapters by just clicking new chapter here, and let's say a smaller unit, and save that chapter. And then anything that you add to your Flexbook, you'll find at the bottom of your Flexbook. So you'll see the smaller unit, I can open that up and then drag anything I want within that. Um, so that's kind of reordering or deleting or renaming. You're also welcome to add content from Google or Word. So I can upload via Google or Word, or I could search CK12 for content to use within this Flexbook. Um, please note that as, if you're searching for content, you're most likely adding a concept. So a read that goes in there, if you're uploading, it uploads to a single section within this. So you can't upload a Google Doc with your entire book in there because then you wouldn't have the capability to move it and rearrange it. So it will upload to a section like this section on density. Um, and I'm gonna pause for one second um, just to talk about best practices. So if you notice at the top of this page, it says R148. So that's a revision number that I'm working with here. Um, you're not changing the content that we have, but you're changing the content within your own library. And you're gonna to wanna to save this right here before you go exploring on your site. Because if, you're, if you happen to kind of leave 12 different tabs open and then you're saving in different orders, um, you just wanna make stuff super clean. So work in the tab, make edits, save it, close it, and then go do something else so that you're not worried about what showed up where as you're working. Um, so one option, kind of a strategy at, to work with on here is you can, work with your students, you can do this yourself. So you can reorder and limit what they have. Um, you can also rewrite different components based on reading levels as you're working. And that might help you as you're going through and kind of differentiating instruction or building content accordingly. Um, so I'm gonna remind you again, you do not have to do any of this editing at all. You're welcome to use our content as is. Um, but I am gonna open up one section in here just so you can see what that might look like if you were gonna edit the content itself. So this is just taking a second and saving this textbook because it's a new textbook and there's a bunch of sections and it's gonna add it to my library as I go. And if that's gonna to take too long because there's too many sections for right now, I'm gonna just open up another one so you can see what that might look like in terms of editing a piece. So if I pulled let's say one from Earth Science, and I was talking about the scientific method, you could open that read, and I can, if you don't wanna do a whole textbook, if you're just trying to customize a particular lesson, you're welcome to do it from here as well. Um, if it's within a book, I recommend editing it from within the book so that you don't have complications as you're working through. But I can customize this, I'm gonna save it as a for demo, and then, oh, it looks like the density one is open, so you can see that as well. Um, so we can actually switch back to there, but you can kind of see it in either way, either from the page itself or from the book itself. And if you're working within a book, I definitely recommend going from that book place. So once I'm in this particular read, you'll see your standard word editing options at the top. Um, and then there's a couple of things that you're gonna wanna note. One, you can insert images there. You can go down, you'll see this multimedia option. So I can look at this and it just pulled a YouTube link and then put a video in there. And if you wanted to add those yourself, you can do it through this play button. And then if you're looking to do formulas, this is our math editor. So that opens up and you can add different 
um, equations either by knowing the coding for that or by using our drop down option at the top. So if I click in here, I can use any of the drop down options here if I'm writing, you know, projectile motion equations for physics or something like that. So those are definitely options for editing. I'm not going to spend a ton of time exploring those right now because most of them are pretty um, just normal for anyone who's edited within a Word doc, but you're welcome to check those out and ask us questions. And I'm gonna um, kind of wrap up with two more strategies before I take questions for this section. The first is maybe instead of you creating a flexbook, having your students create a flexbook for a particular unit um, or for a class as a whole, and they can pull resources and add them in. Um, or you could, if you wanted to create kind of a playlist, you could actually rewrite this so it included the text that you wanted and then the multimedia video that you wanted. You can put links to our Plix and our Sims in here or external resources and really use this as a structure to create kind of a multimedia unit or multimodal unit for any particular class. Um, so let's pause for a couple of minutes and see what questions we might have. Um, we were asked, can you add YouTube videos for concepts? So definitely, um, you are welcome to do that within a Flexbook that you're customizing right here. Or um, you can actually go up to your library. So if I click on my library, um, I'm just gonna leave that because I don't need to save those changes. And I can create a new modality. And instead of creating a read, I could actually create a video modality. And then demo for... Uh, 217 and save that. Oops, let's do this. And as we go through, I could then create it. If I just wanted that video, I could do the same thing where I could insert it within this particular part and then share that modality with my students. Um, another question we have is Have teachers used your resources instead of classroom textbooks, or have they been using these resources in conjunction with what they have? The answer to that question is both and more options. Um, so I've had teachers use an occasional resource here or there. I've had teachers um, use different resources with students um, or as a class as a whole, students study on their own. And then we have entire districts. So you heard from Dan Lawson, um, and they've actually basically ditched their textbooks and have just started using CK12 as their primary textbook. Um, and they've customized and created their content to specifically match Tennessee state standards and work from there. Um, so you'll see kind of a wide range of use cases based on their goal and their adoption cycle and what they're looking at for a particular class. Um, so we had a question on editing practice. And so that will hold off until part three of this webinar because I will definitely be going into that. Um, and then the question on, are students able to edit and mess up the customized Flexbooks? So they are able to edit and customize their own book, but that would be in their own library. Um, and just like you can't mess up our content, they can't mess up your content. So if you have a book that you've shared, if they click customize and edit, they're just creating an extra copy of that in their own library, and they can mix and match that and make their own resource. Um, but they can't mess up your own Flexbook that you have created for the class. So I think that is probably a good place to switch back to talk about our last section. Um, please feel free to keep those questions coming and we'll be sure to answer them as we go through and beyond. Um, but we'll have Julie share our presentation and talk about kind of practice and customization of that. Great. So. For this last section, um, I'm going to have our click play there, and we're going to talk about assignments. So I want to go through some tools for creating assignments. I'm going to start by showing you CK12 groups, um, so whether class groups or study groups. The next part I'll talk about is adaptive practice and quizzes, so you'll get to see what that looks like and how that works in our system and the ability to customize that, as you mentioned. And then the last part I'll talk about is different tools and apps and LMS integration. And I know we've hit on some of those as we go. Um, so as there's a lot, we've done webinars just on a full hour on assignments and practice. So this is going to be a very quick overview. Um, but feel free to stay on and ask us questions or check out our All About CK12 Adaptive Practice webinar on our webinars page. And then sign up for one specifically on assignments if you really want to go in depth on this particular topic. Let me share a video from a teacher. 
So this is about the ease of creating assignments on CK12. El Paso District Science teacher Christina Pasillas uses assignments with her students at Austin High School. So through the groups, it's very easy. I'm able to just look up something, an activity, a quiz, anything that I really want, and just assign it to the groups by hitting the assign button or sharing with the group. So it's, it's really simple. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. So hopefully that kind of gives you an impression of what it's like kind of from a teacher perspective to use our groups feature. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to switch over and show you what this looks like on our site. Um, so if I go up to groups, um, you can see creating a group. You'll see here the new groups dashboard. If you've been using groups, you can always go back to the old version. Um, but we are showing kind of this new groups feature and you'll get this little demo update on what has happened there. Um, but I can go into any of my groups here and see how they're doing. Um, I can see kind of their reports and grades. This is an assignment and what's happening throughout the course of this piece. Um, so definitely use that group to monitor how your students are doing as well as assignments that you're making. To make an assignment, I can go to any of our resources on our site, any of our core content, and use that assign to um, groups feature that you saw at the top. So if I click on, let's say, cell biology and the particular read, I can, above that add to library, I can assign to class. And so from here, I can pick the class that I want. I can pick a due date, let's say Friday, and I could put some instructions and then I could assign that to my class. And that will show up in that class. And then because I've assigned it, it would also show up in other classes and I could quickly click assign as well if I wanted to do that. Um, so one recommendation for a strategy for your class is to flip your class and to assign videos or prep some you know, real world application or simulation or something like that for homework and then come in and have students do some of those questions that they might be struggling with um, within the class itself and you can kind of talk about that as you go. Um, one note you might have seen in the groups, I had a couple different groups there, but when I tried to assign a class, not all of my groups showed up there. And that's because maybe some of those groups were study groups. And so just full disclosure, make sure that if you want to assign work and see student progress, that you're creating groups that are class groups. So if I was in there and I was going to create a new group, um, I can click on add group. And I'd want to choose that this is a class group, which allows me to assign homework. If my students want to work together, a study group is great, or if I want to work with my colleagues, that's also a great option for a study group. Um, so now let's talk about adaptive practice, because that's definitely a key component of our site and what we offer, and I'm assuming a lot of you will want to use that piece. So we're gonna, you could find that practice through any topic, just in that modality page or that concept page, or you can browse practice as a whole through this practice icon. Um, and let's pick life science, and maybe ecology and ecosystems. And you'll notice that before they start practicing, that if you're accessing it from the browse page instead of from the concept page, those other modalities are available to students before they start practicing. But if they were gonna actually start practicing, you'll see different questions that show up. So uh, we can check that piece. If I'm doing well, this little meter will kind of expand. If I start randomly guessing and typing in random stuff as I go through, that's going to bump down and you'll start seeing more and more components um, until it pops up and makes recommendations. So when I say our system is adaptive, it's because as students are struggling, we actually recommend checking out a read or a real world application or something like that. And as they're doing well, it would bump them up to available harder problems as they're working. Um, and so I'm going to return to practice and kind of expand and you'll see some of them have a hint that might help them out as they go through. Um, so that's the adaptive practice component and kind of that idea of either making recommendations or um, working with students to help them as they're going through. If I went back here and that submit option, make sure that they're clicking if you actually want to see their score. But I can go down and I can see, okay, well, in this case, I got this one right. It told me how I'm doing. It gave me the kind of the answers as I'm looking through. And this report on the level of questions as well as kind of the amount of time they spend, and that all shows up within that group as a teacher if you assign that work. 
You're also welcome to customize it. So there's a question about customizing practice. I can customize practice this way by creating a quiz. And that lets me fix the questions, fix the time, show hints or not, and kind of create that very specific assignment. If I wanted to pick multiple concepts, um, I could also do that through my groups feature within CK12. Um, so definitely options as you're working your way through. And as I said, practice is super in-depth and we've spent a whole hour on it, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of overview as you're working through. Um, and so a couple strategies just to think about before we move on to tools and apps as we go. Um, this is a great way you could just assign different practice or have students explore to fill in any gaps that maybe they missed, um, whether, you know, science often is based on mathematics, so maybe have them practice some math concepts that might be helpful, or have them practice, um, you know, life science if you're teaching biology, and fill in some of those holes as they're working. You could also use practice like a Plix or a Sim as a warm-up to your class um, in terms of kind of having them try some stuff and then using that to start a discussion. And then if we went back here for a second and they saw kind of that progress, you could actually have students go through this and help teach them how to self-assess by saying, okay, well, you're not spending that much time on it, so maybe it's something that you wanna spend more time on to help you with that concept. Or you're doing really well in these topics, but not in these, let's talk about which questions you got wrong and what we might wanna work on to help you as you go through. Um, so that's another great strategy as you're working. But I'm gonna move from here, from practice, to cover that last piece of our tools and apps, just so you have some pieces, and then we'll answer some questions before we wrap up. Um, and then we'll, once again, stay on and answer any last questions. Um, so you can see some of the places that we're integrated with here, but if I scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on our tools and apps link, you'll see that we have three CK12 apps. So one is our Flexbook uh, online and offline access. So right now you can download any CK12 Flexbook and access it offline. And shortly you'll have the option to do so with user created or customized content as well. Um, the physics simulation app allows for the same thing. You can download a physics sim and then access it offline, which is great for anyone who has kind of spotty internet or they wanna make sure they access something when they're elsewhere. Um, and then our practice app is, works on phones as well as tablets. So if a student had a phone and wanted to do their homework on that instead of on a computer, they are more than welcome to do that. Because of the adaptive component, you do need to be accessing the internet in order to access the practice app from there. Um, and then in terms of integration, so we had a couple of questions on integration. For Google Classroom, um, you can share content there, but if you wanna see your progress, you're gonna wanna assign it within CK12. For Edmodo and Schoology and Canvas, you can assign content, whether practice or other content for Schoology and Canvas. Um, and that is already set up for grade passback, so you can actually see how students are doing within those systems. Um, and then you can kind of see some other options where you can get content from CK12 on Blackboard or Nearpod. Um, and for anything that's not on here that you're curious, all of our pages, that URL at the top is totally shareable. So you can take that URL and share it in another system that you're working with um, and allow students to go back to CK12 and access it at that particular point in time. Um, so I think we're gonna kind of start maybe wrapping up. We're gonna actually skip some strategies that are within the um, chat window so you can go back and see those and we'll make sure to send those out to you in an email as well. And I'm gonna have Julie steal the screen and talk about our upcoming webinars, just so you know what's next. Um, and I'm gonna actually, let me pause for one second because I realized I skipped a couple questions there before we went in there. Um, so let me answer the questions that have come in and then we'll do that wrap up in a few minutes. Um, so we answer the question about editing content and practice. Um, so hopefully that has answered your question. Um, we just talked about integration. So if that is not enough of an answer for the person that was asking about integration with other places, please let us know and we'll answer that some more. Um, and we had a question on showing where to find the adaptive practice again. So you have two options. You can go to the homepage and you can scroll down to these four core icons and click on adaptive practice and browse that way. Or for any particular concept, so let's say in physical science, if I'm picking on a concept, I can click on that page and then I can click on the practice or the assessment that's there. So definitely the same um, kind of either coming from practice as a whole because you want to browse it or coming from a particular concept page. 
Um, we have a question about, a qu is a quiz the same as practice? And the answer to that question is no. So our adaptive practice system allows for that um, questions to kind of adjust based on how students are doing. It allows us to make recommendations. The minute you change that to a quiz and start customizing your content, um, you have taken control of the system and you can use a quiz that you have made as practice. So you're welcome to leave the number of the hints on there. They can try it unlimited times. Um, but by making it a quiz, you're taking control and so you're pulling it out of the adaptive practice component on our system. Um, if you want to mix and match concepts, you can do that through the groups and create a practice assignment with multiple concepts of practice. But the quizzes are definitely different than practice itself. Um, and we had a question on what does at grade mean for difficulty levels? So right here you can see at grade, or in this case, there might be a basic option. So if I click on basic, you'll see this real world application. Um, and what we try to do is, especially if it's a concept that spans multiple um, levels, so maybe a concept that shows up in both life science and biology, um, you might see some different pieces where there's resources that are tagged to basic or at grade or advanced. And that's really just a chance to help you differentiate and maybe give you an indication of what level that resource is at. Um, but you can always choose all levels and pick and choose yourself on what you mean um, or what you're looking for in that place. Great. So I think on that note, we're going to um, have Julie talk about our upcoming webinars. Uh, so thanks, Katie. We hope today's demonstrations and some of these short videos of actual users in the classroom have encouraged and inspired you guys. Please keep an eye out for our upcoming webinars on additional topics that might be of interest to you. Coming up in March, we're going to be having a full webinar on just our interactives. So that'll be the clicks and simulations. You can register for any upcoming webinar and see archived ones at www.ck12.org slash webinars. I also want to let you know about CK12's Jumpstart page. This past summer, we ran a six-week program that took the major components of CK12 and went in-depth week by week. The Jumpstart page was all, has all of our archived videos, transcripts, and lists of participants who might be in a city or a state near you. Now, another great way to continue this conversation, network with other users, CK12 users, and get support from our staff is to join a CK12 cafe. So from our homepage, you can click on Cafe, and you can see the various forums for both students and educators. I'd recommend you guys join the Jumpstart for Educators Cafe and keep checking back as we add state-specific forums. Also, before we end the webinar, we would encourage you to please answer a short questionnaire to give us feedback on the content and presentation of today's webinar because we're always looking to improve your experience. The link to the Google form is listed on the screen. It's tinyurl.com slash CK12 for science, Feb 17. And it's also being messaged to everyone in the chat window. And we'll be sending it to you in a follow-up email as well. So once again, I just want to say thank you all so much for joining us today. And let me assure you that you will continue to be supported by our team at CK12. We're happy to help you guys in any way. Please send us an email anytime to support at ck12.org. Also, please don't forget to let your social networks know about CK12 and your participation in our webinars. We're on all of the socials as CK12 Foundation or you can hashtag CK12. Okay, that's it for today's core programming, but as promised, we'll be staying on after for any additional questions you'd like our team to answer. Katie? Thanks, Julie. Um, so as we said, you know, we wanna try to keep our core webinar to a reasonable time, but we are gonna stick around for a little bit. Um, feel free to put questions in the Q&A window. Um, if we keep getting questions, we'll keep staying on and answering them. Um, and if we, you guys are all set, you're welcome to sign off and head out and go from there.
So we have one question about the best way to update incorrect answers on workbook pages. Um, so if it's your own customized workbook, you have full control to update that. Um, if there's anything else that you're looking to update, let me share my screen. Um, and I will show you the best way to do that. And we will definitely make sure that that gets updated. Um, so our help desk option, you can see up at the top right here. And if I go into there, I can pick a role for teachers and parents. You can go through here and you can kind of look at different options. So that's one thing. And you can always send an email. But we even have a um, specific thing for reporting an error. Um, and so let me show you that as well. Let me just pull that up um, as we go through back to our page. And if you do contact us right there, you can see if you have questions, the Help Center, but then if there's a content error, um, please let us know. And you can kind of let us know through using that form and we will route it to the appropriate person, whether that's math or science or English or elsewhere. Um, and just let us know what's wrong and we'll update it that way. Um, and the best part about having digital content is that we don't have to wait for another number of years for the new published book to be updated. Um, we can actually update that almost instantaneously. So please, please, please help us keep our stuff up to date and accurate. Thanks. And we have a question, is there a way to upload keynotes from certain chapters for others to use? Um, so if you're, maybe you could clarify just a little bit um, for the person who asked that question. Are you talking about notes that you, like when I was showing the highlighting tool or like a keynote presentation? Um, so just add a little bit of detail in there and then maybe we can answer that as we go through. Um, we had a different question on sending the homeschool teacher a link to view this. Uh, yes, you are welcome to share anything that we offer. Um, as I said, we do not charge for anything. Um, so you can share any of the resources via that share plane or via a link to that. And then for this webinar specifically, we will um, have this up on our webinars page in the archive section. And you're welcome to share that with anyone, um, whether another teacher or homeschool teacher, a parent, your students, whatever that looks like. And maybe I'll try to answer the, the notes piece. If you are, um, if that does have to do with kind of highlighting notes, then I would definitely say um, you would want to, okay, so it looks like it's presentations in a classroom for teaching a certain chapter. Um, so if you remember where I showed you the answer keys in that book, so for any particular read, if I go to, let's say, uh, we were looking at one, you know, in chemistry, if I pick a chem flex book, in that resources tab, I can actually upload resources. So right now, because I don't own this book, I can't change anything, but if I customized it, so if I go to my library and I pull up a book that I was working on, so this particular book right here, I can edit this book, and then in the resources tab, I could upload files. Um, so, in order to work within our system, you would, it would need to be a Word or a Google Doc to get kind of get that text as you're working through. Um, but you're welcome to share a resource. Note that if you're uploading it and sharing it through here, it needs to fall under the same Creative Commons licensing. Um, but you're definitely welcome to add resources that way. Or you can share resources via your group if you maybe created a class or a study group for teachers and you could share resources from CK12 within that and maybe link out to other places as well. Um, great. Okay, I think with that, we might be done with questions. As we said, feel free to email support with questions, check out our webinars page, um, explore our content, and sign up for another webinar in March or as we continue our way through this school year.
So I hope you're all have a wonderful evening and we'll go from there.